Money can't buy you class. Elegance is love. Hey guys, I'm back. Listen, I've been watching the show. I just have not had time to review it. But I do now. I finally got a chance to review the show. So far, let's talk about it. Luann, let me tell y'all something. I don't think that this is just alcohol. Because when Barbara and Bethany were talking about they had to have an intervention because she was selling all of her stuff and she was about to sell the house and she had been, um, the house is in her kid's name and she had been like eating up their inheritance. That's why they sued her and they had to like intervene and take over all of her finances. I was like, that don't sound like alcohol to me. That sound like crack. <laughs> it do, guys. I was just like, this sounds very crackish. I think that maybe Luann went into rehab for several things. And I think the only one that she feels comfortable talking about is alcohol. Because can we tell the truth and shame the devil? All of these, all these housewives and these reality TV stars, they all do alcohol in something else. Okay? It's always a little something else that they drop in a drink or something. You know, it's more than what we see. Okay? I just feel like Luann felt comfortable saying that it was alcohol because she had to say something. She got arrested. You know what I mean? She had to go to rehab. Like she had to say something. And I think she just felt comfortable because alcoholism is more accepted than heroin or crack addiction or pills, you know, all that, that's more like looked down upon, you know what I mean? Uh, alcohol will be like, oh, well, we understand because it's legal, you know? I also feel like people will probably be more accepting of saying, oh, yeah, she had an alcohol addiction, you know? And maybe she will feel more comfortable talking about that and saying, well, you know, I also had a shot of black tar heroin before I had my drink. She's not going to say that, but she's going to talk about alcohol because it's more palatable. Also, Barbara, how y'all feel about her? I don't know yet. The jury is still out. I don't think that Barbara has a storyline outside of being Luann's watchdog. And when she's not being her watchdog, she fades into the background for me. You know what I mean? Like she's just not, she's on a show with very strong personalities. And I feel like she's fading because before when she was just defending Luann for everything, I was like, it's enough, Barbara. Like it's a lot. Now she's not doing that anymore. And I'm like, where'd you go? Like, if you're not protecting Luann, you're not interesting. Since you got to change that if you want to come back. Also, since we're on the Countess, let's talk about her show. This is the thing. I realize that she's probably starting to get on the ladies' nerves about the cabaret. But I'm proud of her. I really, really am. She was just in rehab. You know, she had a little issue. She was able to bounce back and have a very successful cabaret show. Because, guys, even out here in L.A., Mother is selling out theaters. Like, she is selling out theaters that have really heavy ticket prices. I was looking at one of her shows out here at a really popular theater that, like, acts like Kevin Hart has booked recently. And her tickets were, like, in the hundreds for Countess Luann. Somebody who can't sing is just going to walk around in a Giovanni dress. People are really paying big bucks to see her. And those were the cheap seats. So I'm really proud of her. I get that she's annoying the women, but you know what? what? If I had a really bad year and I was able to bounce back from it successfully, I would probably talk about it a lot. I would probably talk about it a lot more than my, you know, issues because that probably, it feels good. You know what I mean? So it probably helps keep her going and keep her clean and sober. That's what I think is happening. I mean, yes, she's a bragger, but I feel like she's trying to talk about that or, or continues to talk about her cabaret and her being so successful to counter what she just came out of. Because I'm telling you, those demons don't leave you. Those demons of doubt, those demons of misery and all, they don't leave. They stay there and they talk and they try to tear you down. You have to constantly fight that so that you don't reach for things that will mute you or make it go away momentarily so i'm thinking that that is her way of healing that is her own kind of therapeutic way i don't think the ladies are tapping into that and i think they're feeling some sort of way like she's making them feel less than but i'm like guys she just got out of jail she was on her way to prison <laughs> you know what i mean let her talk about her cabaret and uplift her she had a bad year it's okay to help your girl out even if it inconveniences you that's what a friend is. Does anybody know what happened to Bethany's driver, the old black man? Because now she
she got this young white driver and I'm just like, Bethany, I hope he retired and wasn't fired because that driver went through hell and back with Bethany. I remember one time I was watching the show and she gave him, she was having like a problem with her period and she was like bleeding very heavily and she bled on his pillow. And then she like got out the car and gave it to him. She gave him her period blood soaked pillow to take care of. Girl, I hope he retired. <laughs> you know how many episodes that he had to sit through with Bethany just falling apart in the backseat of the car. He counseled her. He was not just her driver. He was her bodyguard. He was her counselor. He was everything to her. I really hope that that dude was not fired. Bethany, if you fire him, sis, you trash. I don't care. I don't care what it was. That man has been through hell and back with Bethany. He don't deserve that. I hope he wasn't fired. Who knows to tell you about him? Let me know in the comment section below. Relief effort has become the new skinny girl for Bethany. Every three seconds she's talking about, oh, my relief efforts. And all. Girl, stop. This is what I'm telling y'all. Y'all, the, the people, the people who disagree with me about their and our charity, this is what I'm talking about. Bethany does the same exact thing. I don't feel like the charity is to help people. I think, yes, I want to do this to help people, but I think that she likes getting that back that she did this. She likes that attention of her being some kind of savior. It's very self-serving. I do not think it's genuine. That is my problem with Bethany and Lisa and their charity. They're only doing it unless a spotlight is on them. If the spotlight ain't there, they're not doing it. It's like those YouTubers, those charity YouTubers who like post videos of them, like giving a homeless person money. I'm like, this person is down on their luck. They look like they've been through it and are still going through it. And you want to film yourself giving them $20? Really? And they don't see that as a problem. They don't see that it's in a way retorturing this person who is already going through so much because you're doing this for clicks and views and you're also getting millions of views on a show that has commercials. You're not even giving this person who helped make it go viral unwillingly a portion of that. You're just saying, oh my goodness, look at this homeless person. Let me give them some money. Because I remember one of the dudes that started it and made it go viral was the one who was doing like these pranks, but they were really fake. And he was doing like these pranks in the hood. So people were coming at him. It was just like, what you're doing is really racist. So you need to stop and they're reporting his videos to YouTube. So all of a sudden he was just like, I'm going to become, you know, this, this God now. I'm going to start giving money to homeless people and filming it. And I want to start showing people, oh my goodness, look, I gave this homeless man a burger. And I'm like, would you still give him the burger and the $20 if nobody was filming you? If you weren't getting millions of views on YouTube, I don't like charity like that. And that's just me. That's just me. Like, give. Give. It should not be something that you want to come back to you. You should always give just because it's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Just because somebody is in need and somebody needs help. And if you have more, like your heart, it should pull at your heartstrings to do that. It should never be, let me do this so that everybody can see that I'm a good person. You have the option of being David or Saul. Choose David every time. Before he started all that cheating and murdering. You know what? Bad analogy. <laughs> young King David. Young King David. Not, not the one who was in his 40s and reckless. And in saying that, I do agree with Bethany. I do agree that she needs to pump the brakes. You know, because listen, Bethany was hustling. That's what I love about her and Lisa Renna and Candy. That she was hustling from the beginning, right? And she even said it. I've been doing this for 10 years. No breaks. Got, got, you know, got married, got divorced, had a baby, running all these companies, starting new companies. And it's finally at a place where she feels like she can chill, especially since losing dinner. She's just like, I'm running on empty. I got to put, I got to put some gas in the tank and I got to slow down. I agree with her. She also has a daughter that's growing, you know what I mean? And she's getting to a point where she's going to be start, start to become independent and making decisions on her own. And that's, you really need to be there, especially as a mom, because this world ain't safe for women. And so you really need to be there to guide your daughter and make sure she has the proper tools to go out in the world without you. You know what I mean? So I agree. And I also agree that she needs some time for herself because while she's doing all of those businesses and dealing with the loss of Dennis and dealing with her divorce and raising her daughter, she's also filming a TV show. It's a lot. Bethany is a crier. She cries all the time. This breakdown, I felt it. I felt it. Homegirl was just like, I'm overwhelmed. I need a break. I don't even do half the stuff that she does. And I'm like, I need my time. You know what I mean? Like I was doing a lot of work and I was after I was doing all my work at the I'm leaving set and I'm coming here and I'm doing these videos because I, I feel obligated and because I want to, you know what I mean? But then it got to a point where I was just like, I need to, I need to, you know, 
I need to chill because I'm, I'm running on empty and I'm not giving you my best because I'm rushing to try to get you a product that comes easy to me, but I'm forcing it because I'm putting all of this weight on it. And that's not right. You know what I mean? So you sometimes just got to pull back. You got to get yourself healthy and then you can get back to where you need to get. I love how Bethany is just like, I need to, you know, take it down a notch and get to a point where I can operate still in my successful businesses, but not to a point where I feel like I'm breaking down where I'm not enjoying the fruits of my labor because that's what you should do. You work all this, you work this hard, you work this long so that you can enjoy it later in life. And I agree with her. You did, you did the work, girl. You put in the work. You did the damn thing. Now it's time to enjoy. I really hope that Scott and his toupee is not scamming Tinsley. I really, really do because Scott was all about Tinsley when his coupon cabin commercials was playing every freaking commercial break next season, last season. Now, you can't reach him. Tinsley can't reach him. We can't find him. He can't film. All of a sudden, he's afraid of the cameras. When? You were never afraid of the cameras. You, you were popping up on Tinsley. You were in everything. You were coupon cabin commercial. Now, all of a sudden, this lifestyle ain't for you. Tinsley, I feel like he scammed you. I really, and I feel sorry for her because I feel like she's getting older and she wants these things and she wants them now, but she's not in a stable relationship. And I feel like she was trying to make something work with a guy who she probably knew. You know what I mean? Sometimes women, when we really want something, when we really want a guy, we will overlook things. We will overlook huge red flags because we have a goal with this guy. You know what I mean? Just like, ah, oh, I know I shouldn't do this, but I really want to be married at this age. And I really want kids and I'm not going to have kids before um, I'm married. So I'm just going to make it work with this guy so I can get these kids. There are a lot of women who, mar who marry men for children. And then like once they get the kid, just like, I don't think I want to do this no more. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, it happens all the time because society puts in our mind that we have to have these things. And so out of nowhere, this clock starts ticking and you're like, I have to have these things. And sometimes life doesn't fall into place like the way you want, not sometimes, all the time. So life didn't fall into place at the time that society told you that it sh these things should happen. So you start forcing these things to happen and then you get Tinsley having a meltdown at a circus. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't do circuses and I don't do zoo circuses. Is that, y'all know what I mean. Not a circus person. I'm not a zoo person. Anti. Anti-circus. Anti-zoo. I don't know what the hell my kids going to do. Me and my husband just going to have to get some coins and take them to a safari so they can see the animals in a natural habitat. But I just don't, I don't do captivity and I don't do animal cruelty. So that's my thing, right? And saying that tends to look good. You know what I mean? If I was going to do a circus thing, if I was into it, I, that would be my outfit. I It was like this big sequence bow, this sequence little, um floppy tea kind of dress it was so cute she looked so cute and i was so happy for her because i felt like she did a good job for what tinsley could do i wasn't expecting the breakdown but she was taking them what was that wine whatever that was she was taking it down i think she had like eight drinks <laughs> and then the next thing you know she's falling apart and crying on her mama and crying about her dad i felt like tinsley was dealing with a lot right and everything that she was dealing with in the moment where she became vulnerable, just regurgitated out of her body and everything. She didn't, her mom, she didn't like how her mom treats her. She always says, and her mom was like, she can't be talking about me. Like she doesn't feel this way about me. Yes, ma'am, she does. You're very judgmental. And this woman is 43, still trying to please you. Problem number one. Then she's still dealing with the issues of her father. Problem number two. And now she's trying to rush and get married and have kids with a dude who don't want her, who's only using her for her fame in the access of this show. Problem number three. Tinsley needs therapy. Tinsley needs to get to know who Tinsley is without being taken care of. And I don't think that's a possibility for her. Because Tinsley, like her mom, she has been raised to be a woman that's being taken care of. Like she has been raised for her position in her mind. She's just like, I'm a mom and a housewife. Like that's what I'm supposed to be. That's that's the life. I'm the wife of a wealthy man. I am the mother of, you know, children with huge trust funds. That's how she was raised. That is how the women in her community was raised. That is all she knows. So her not having that reality right now is messing with her mind. All women have it. You know what I mean? There's there's always something within our community that we're told that this is what we should have. And if we don't have it, we're like breaking down and falling apart. I grew up in church. So I was expecting to, you know, be on my 
at least first child by 23. You know what I mean? Like I was, that was supposed to be my life. So when that wasn't happening, I'm like in college already feeling guilty for going to college and not trying to get married or whatever. You know what I mean? So I'm already dealing with the guilt of that, that I'm messing up my timeline and then leaving college and not having a husband and you know, Ooh, I think about it now, child. Could you imagine 23 year old Nikki married with kids? Why, why did I ever want that church? You know, it was my environment. It was what was the norm. And I remember having that and breaking down because that would, that is what was normal in my community. So I'm thinking that's happening with Tinsley. Like the normalcy, her normal, like her normal is not happening for her. And this girl is falling apart. I feel so bad for her. You know, another thing I don't like, I don't like how the ladies are making it a bad thing that Tinsley wants to be taken care of. She doesn't want to be a businesswoman. She doesn't want to own all these things. She just wants to be a hot little skinny wife of a wealthy man and give him two babies and that's it. And they're making it seem like it's a big issue. Like they didn't start on their backs as well. Like I don't like when women do that. I really, really don't. I hate when women get with these guys, right? And after you get divorced, you get a little coin or the dude dies and you get a little coin and then you can live the life that you wanted to live before him, but you couldn't live that life because you ain't had that money. So then this dude has provided you this coin to live a certain lifestyle. Now all of a sudden you're this businesswoman like the dude that you slept with wasn't a huge investor in your business. Get out of here. None of y'all self-made. None of y'all built that up from the ground. The only one who's closest to being self-made is Bethany. And even then she was in a privileged circle. So it's like y'all all had help. A, a lot of you just became businesswomen. You know what I mean? So you still don't really know how to work this businesswoman thing out. You know, but she has to. She got to figure something out because I guess her alimony or whatever it is is running out. And, you know, the daughter is turning 18, so she about to get her share. And you know how them rich kids get. They don't like helping their parents. <laughs> rich kids will sue their parents, kill their parents, divorce their parents. They're on a whole nother level. So she had to figure something out for herself because even within the circle or this like elite society that they're living in, in like New York, even a Bravo check is not enough. It's not enough to keep up that kind of lifestyle. You know, it's like pocket change really to keep up this 1% kind of lifestyle. So if we're gonna tell the truth for shame the devil, the real businesswoman here is Bethany. Everybody else, come on. And even Bethany had a little bit of help. So let's not try to, downplayed Tinsley. You know what? Maybe Barbara too. I don't know about Barbara. She seemed like she was, she gave me gutter. Like she gave me, I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. I don't know if she had rich investors. I think that she maybe had some, um, wise guy investors. You know, I think her money was a little dirty. <laughs> she just gave me that. But I'm just saying like, don't treat Tinsley like that. When you all were the same women, you just had a dude that died or had a dude that gave you a lot of money or got a nice divorce settlement. So you were able to all of a sudden become a businesswoman. That wasn't your money. He, he was the businessman that worked for it. He left it to you or you got part of it in the divorce. Stop it. Don't do that to Tinsley. Y'all would have been in the same position. Matter of fact, y'all were Tinsley at that age. Ladies, come on. You love a wrap dress, don't you? <laughs> Ramona, I don't ever want her off this show. This cast, aside from Barbara, because I just really don't know, I don't want them to break this cast up. I feel like New York has been giving it. I love what they're doing with these ladies. I enjoy this show. When Ramona was sitting there putting on her chapstick, sizing up Barbara, and then she gonna say, you love a wrap dress, don't you? And then she starts dragging her in her confessional from last week's episode. And she's just like, she always wears a wrap dress. Her style. Like, she needs to change it up. It's not 1996. Oh, Barbara. So, Barbara, uh, girl, this is the thing, right? You came from Ramona. You should not have done that. Because Ramona will hold a grudge. She will not let anything go. Even when she tells you that you guys are good, she will bring back something from 20 years ago. And just be like, well, when you said this to me, you're just like, I thought we were cool. I thought we worked through this. Ramona never forgets. She rarely forgives. She wants everybody to forget and forgive her, but she is not the same. So I'm like, Barbara, you done messed up. Ramona is going to drag you for the whole season. She was even dragging you when you walked in so much that Barbara was just like, okay, can we stop with the insults? I love Ramona. I love this cast. Thank you ladies for always delivering. I totally appreciate it. Potomac, you better step it up.
Poor Barbara, she has no idea. Girl, you are going to get dragged for the whole season. She's going to drag you at the reunion and she's going to continue to drag you as long as you are on this show. You should have never came for Ramona. Don't ever come for Ramona or Bethany. Those two are not the ones to mess with. They don't forget nothing. So that's pretty much where it ends. Before we wrap up, I do want to talk about that throwback photo of Luann as a nurse. Let me tell you something. I'm a gorgeous girl, right? But I know when I get my Hollywood coin, brown cow stunning. I cannot wait for my glow up after some change. I can't wait. When I get my coins, guys, I just, whoo, ooh, I just got a glimpse of wealthy Nikki. Sickening. Sickening. Because you could not have told me that that was when. I was looking at the picture like, who is this man? Woo! Anyway, that's it for me in this episode. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this season thus far. How you feeling about Barbara? Jury's still out for me, but we will see. Anyway, if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Click that notification button so you can know when I'm posting something. Like I said before, mother is booked and busy. I can't be on the schedule right now, but I'm telling you, it will be worth the wait. I want to try my best to get on track as I can. But, you know, I got to do what I got to do. I'm pursuing my first love. And it's going well. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, see you soon. Love you guys. Bye.